there. Sorry, I've had the, one of the busiest weeks of my life this past week. So, too, trying to catch up on leather work. Before starting this video, I'd like to tell you something, maybe cheer you up. It's kind of funny. Anyway, that was the Costco parking lot. Yeah, I know, I shouldn't go to Costco. Costco is evil, by the way. And uh, <laughs> heading to Costco, there was a, a really valuable Ferrari, not just like a regular Ferrari, which is expensive. It must have been like a quarter million dollar, half million dollar Ferrari. It's only 10 feet away from it. I noticed the windows are rolled down. There's somebody sitting in the passenger seat. But anyway, I'm just looking at the vehicle. And I walk around half of the vehicle. I don't say anything. I'm just staring at uh, high quality. And then there's an old lady. I mean, old, 65 maybe. I see her reach into her pocket or whatever. So she pulls out a key fob. And she hits the button, and the car alarm goes off. Wee wee wee! <laughs> she's trying to, she's trying. <laughs> you know, it's not like I was petting on the car or drooling it. I'm not really a car person. I just appreciate high quality. See, she wanted me to bug her off because I was staring at the Ferrari. You can't make that up. I laughed for about an hour over that one. I thought that was pretty funny. <clears throat> I do these videos on what's going on because people like to talk with each other. And I read every comment regardless, but I especially enjoy reading these. Um, as a side note, um, the head of uh, New South Wales, Gladys, Berserker, Barrett Jerklian, you know who I'm talking about. She just resigned. Um, they're doing an investigation on her. So I, probably moving chess pieces around on the chessboard in Australia. It's actually gotten so bad in Australia that is actually making some news here in the United States, but uh, this video is not really at all dominated in discussing Australia. I've never seen a more perfect uh, uh, arrangement of things um, to divide and conquer people. And the one thing all governments do, whether they be, uh, you know, uh, democratic or uh, socialistic, and that is they like to divide and conquer. There is uh, nothing any government uh, despises more than people that stick together. And I, I really do mean that. I mean, they don't like that at all. They don't like people that stick together. And uh, people are sticking together, but they're being divided and conquered against one another. We're uh, not us, but when I say we are, I'm meaning the people um, the demos are being pitted against one another in a medical apartheid system. That's not good at all. I've never seen such uh, artistic, and artistic, I don't mean that in a complimentary sense, divide and conquer, or people are fighting one another. I mean, it's the reason why we have, uh, you know, the left and the right, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats, the most brilliant thing and just pure evil is this uh, medical apartheid system that's going on right now. It's absolutely atrocious. People need to stick together above all else. I'm hearing from a lot of people, and starting tomorrow, I can't remember if it's New York or where it is, but I'm hearing from a lot of people that they're already been fired or they're about to be fired. There's doctors and firemen and tons and tons and tons of nurses. They're all getting the ax. Just tons and tons of jobs where if people haven't been juiced, and I'm not going to comment on the juice one way or the other. I don't ever tell anybody what to do. I have recommended people uh, um, start putting away non-perishable food, at least uh, half a year's worth. But I'm not going to comment on the juice itself one way or the other. And I certainly don't ever tell anybody what to think or what to do or believe regarding that. But because people are not getting juiced, you know, they're losing their jobs, they're unable to make ends meet, and unable to pay the bills. We have a, a very brilliant, and by brilliant I don't mean that in a complimentary sense, a very brilliant plan of uh, destroying the economy. And as I've said many, many times, once you have people on their knees, it's too late. Once people are on, you really, I don't think people realize this. People think they have options, but once you're on your knees, your options are almost non-existent, essentially non-existent. Here's a fact. This comes from the Marine Exchange of Southern California, or MESC. 
um, the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach, California, where all those ships come in to dock to unload, you know, various forms of garbage that most Americans don't need. Also, too, a lot of essential stuff. The guy that's been working there for decades says, normally, at most, there's one ship waiting to dock to be unloaded. You know, those giant cargo ships that have cargo containers piled, like, all the way to the heavens on top of them? Right now, there's a total... The normal is zero to one. Right now, there's a total of 65 of those super, super duper cargo containers sitting... I don't know what they're doing out there in the middle of the ocean. You know, playing tiddlywinks? What are they doing? 65 of them waiting to dock. And there's an absolute supply chain break, uh, breakdown happening. Um, there's very few people that look at all the information. And that's not chicken little of the sky is falling sort of stuff. Very few people that look at what's going on out there that, uh, that don't agree with that. Uh, the plumber that uh, did my uh, new sewer line said plumbers are going nuts because a lot of the plastic stuff that they need to do their job, they can't get. Um, specifically regarding the United States, they're printing money like never, ever before. Hyperinflation is coming. I mean, it's, it's absolutely off the hook. I heard from an Australian yesterday, he said that uh, people are trying any way possible to flee Australia. People right now, unless they have some sort of rare exemption that they have money or the ability to call in favors for. They can't get out of the country. Um, so people are looking any way possible, including taking sailboats to other countries and then flying somewhere else. I was told that. If I said to you two or three years ago, I said, you know, in the year 2021, there's just going to be anybody that has money, they're going to look for any way possible it's kind of like uh, where Cubans would like throw themselves on inflatable rafts and try to paddle their way to the United States from Cuba, you know, risk their lives in the process. That Australians, not that they're doing inflatable rafts, but they're doing anything at all possible to get the heck out of Australia. I mean, you would have said I was crazy. Um, but I've heard multiple stories on this. Um, there is a supply chain breaking down right now. There's a few things on here I'd like to mention, but the reason why I can't mention it is because certain information now is blocked. So I can't say it. And as the old Chinese saying goes, there's only three things that could be hidden for just so long. The sun, the moon, and the truth. So the truth shall set you free. Also, too, I've never seen in my life, I didn't think I'd see it in my life, such an enormous amount of people that are completely oblivious to truth, facts, wisdom, and common sense and logic. Just completely oblivious, living in a nutshell, sniffing their own farts. It's just absolutely astronomically high. At least here in the United States and in Canada and a few other places I won't mention. Costco, now not that I care about Costco are setting limits now on certain things you can only buy one or two of. So did you really think you'd see that again? It's like, oh, yeah, that's the last we've seen of that, 2020. Yeah, we had a little brief period there where you could only buy so much of something. Yeah, that's just a little hiccup. Well, the hiccup has returned, except the hiccup now is worse than it was before. All these people telling me that they're getting fired and... It depends on what occupation it is, government, uh, nurses, doctors. You know, they're going to be gone here in the next uh, 11 plus days. There's these different deadlines in New York for deadlines for uh, teachers, deadlines for nurses, deadlines for government workers. So basically between now and two weeks from now, there's just going to be hundreds of thousands of people that are in uh, professional jobs that are in high demand. And it's going to say, hey, we need you, but we can't keep you here anymore. I'm uh, not going to comment on that, but I mean, that's a fact. I see a lot of places here in town that uh, have reverted back to the credit card or debit card only thing. They won't take cash because there's once again a coin shortage. 65 ships waiting to dock off of the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach, California. 
This is a rock from my, my farm, by the way. It's my creek. You need to stick together. Don't let these people divide and conquer you against each other. You know, there needs to be an end to this medical apartheid nonsense. It has to end. It is divisive. It is evil. It is wrong. You're stating your opinions now. I'm stating fact. It is divisive. It is wrong. It is evil. It is purely demonic. Don't, you know, don't let these people divide you against your fellow person. Don't let that happen. If you do, then you're playing into the hands of evil. You're becoming a henchman, a servant to evil in so doing. Um, I don't ever tell anybody what to do, but I'll give you a strong recommendation. You need to buy non-perishable food. I highly recommend uh, 30 year meals. They last 30 years, literally. Uh, they'll literally last longer than you will, or, or me. Um, they taste really good. They're called Mountain House Meals. No, I'm not compensated by Mountain House. Buy water filtration. I mentioned which water filtration. It depends whether it's for personal use and also to the volume, what type of water, what type of water filtration to get. I want to consider building a go bag and also to make plans for redundancy. Like if this happens, what do we do? You know, if you're just yourself or just your family, make uh, plans for redundancy. If you think that's an alarmist statement, I'm sorry, but uh, I have my head on a swivel and I can actually process an enormous amount of information. And, uh, and there's a lot of things that will peak quickly. I hope they don't. I really, really, really hope they don't. I mean, I mean that with all my heart. I hope, you know, the worst that happens is that you spend a few hundred dollars on non-perishable food. The last 30 years, it'll be stuff you eat anyway. But you always should be making plans. And I've never seen a more perfect time in my life that you need to make plans like this. You need to have uh, redundancies for necessities like medical needs, food, water, you know, uh, a place to get to if something happens here or where you're at. You need to make plans. You just can't, uh, when, it, when whatever hits, you know, just uh, be, be totally shocked. Um, people that make plans are the ones that, uh, you know, don't uh, befall the, you know, where people are like shaking their hands and running around in a circle like a dog chasing its tail. These people are just they're caught, totally caught off guard. The people that always end up uh, persevering are those that make plans for contingencies. That is never a bad thing. You should always make plans. Anyway, I'm seeing nothing other than perfect divide and conquer with this medical apartheid, which is pure evil, pitting fellow man against fellow man. It's not right, it's evil, it's demonic. I don't care what anybody does in their life, and I don't tell anybody what to do or what to think. But if you uh, play into that type of evil where, uh, you know, you create a medical apartheid system between your fellow human being, you know, then uh, you're engaging in something definitively evil. You just are. Keep seeing shortages. I, I can feel a zeitgeist too around when I, wherever I go now, and uh, there is an ethos and a zeitgeist that's happening wherever I go. It's palpable. It's like you could cut it like a thick fog. Not that you can cut fog. So tell me what you think and what's happening where you're at. And uh, I haven't heard hardly anything from Ireland and uh, uh, New Zealand in quite some time. Everybody says it's bad there, but very little info is coming out of there. Thanks so much for watching.